I know I think so many of us freaked out as we went into the world of lockdown. Uh, and there's some really lovely benefits uh, that we've discovered, I feel, and hopefully we can keep those with us. And I think it's really exciting in the context of digital because we're all in that industry, we're in that space, we're looking to learn more in this space. And obviously through this period of lockdown, this has been a major accelerator in digital transformation where we can work remotely, we can do training sessions virtually, we can collaborate with our teams uh, over different technologies. Uh, so I think it's a really interesting time for digital, digital transformation and the change in behaviours and opportunities that drives. We've got some more opportunities that have been enjoyed here, working in PJs. So apparently there's an actual term for this, which is called poo bearing, okay? Where people are now poo bearing, where they're getting dressed on the top and they're not dressing on the bottom. And I've got a colleague actually who was delivering a really important pitch the other day. He was suited and tied on the top and he was in his PJs on the bottom and his dog started barking. So he got up to close the door and got back to his presentation and everybody was laughing their heads off. And it had been this really serious meeting and they said, you know, we said, what's, what's the problem? And they said, well, we spotted your pajamas. So poo bearing is apparently what it is called. Um, almost no benefits from um, Loredana. She's not so sure that she's enjoyed lockdown. Uh, flexible working hours, being much more productive and being able to sleep longer in the morning and not wasting time commuting. So lots of sentiments there about the life of lockdown, uh, but that's not what we're here for. That's not why we're here. We're here to talk about connecting with your audience in a digital world. Luz, are we ready to go? Yeah, I think let's kick off. Fantastic. And you've heard Lucy, that's her in the background. A very warm welcome to her and thank you for being such a superstar in helping make all of this happen uh, to make it a seamless session for yourselves today. So without further ado, I'm Gina Bessel. Some of you may have met me on Squared Online, others not. I work as a digital marketing consultant. I've been in marketing over 17 years now. I've worked with really big brands like Emirates Airlines, Blackberry Research in Motion, and also smaller startup businesses where I've helped them sort of define and deploy their marketing strategies. I also work as a Google partner. I've been working in the learning and development space, training people, Squared Online, and also with the Google Digital Academy across a full range of their labs. Um, this is what I'll be sharing with you, one of those today, the Brand Activation Lab. Um, and really getting to help them with their largest corporate clients tackle digital marketing. I'm also proud to be a partner of Avado, who I've been working with for the last seven years, helping them build learning programs, deliver learning programs to businesses across all verticals, all sectors, uh, from L'Oreal to HSBC to Tearfall and Group SEB to Shell. So hopefully I'll be able to bring some of that experience and the experience I have on delivering the Brand Activation Lab to share with you in this webinar today. So where are we today? As of the end of May 2020, the stats sat at this. We have an online or well, an internet audience, an active internet audience of 4.65 billion people. Active internet audience that's using the internet every single day. There are only 7 billion people on earth spending an average of 6.7 hours online every single day. And that time being split between 50-50 between computers and mobile. Digital is everywhere. As brands, as businesses, as marketers, we've got to appreciate that, this, and understand how we need to market in this digital world. How we need to market to these connected, empowered, customers. We've entered what is called the age of assistance. Okay, people know when they're being marketed to. It's no longer about selling stuff, talking about us as a brand, our features, our benefits, why we're great and what we do. It's about understanding our audiences. They're more curious, more demanding, more impatient. The number of searches for best olive oil increased 300% last year. Another one? Best travel pillows, travel cushions, last year, not this year. Um, what was the other one? Best shower curtains. Because we have access to so much information, we want more. We've become information hungry. Okay? 
we've also become more demanding. Our last online experience predicates what we expect from our next. If we've been asked or been offered the opportunity to capture our payment card details once through the camera on our device, the next time that we're asked to enter our details, we get a bit annoyed. I used to live in Brussels. I'd travel every single week back to London. Every single time I logged onto the Eurostar website, I was asked, would you like to travel from London to Paris? Why? Because it's their most popular route. But if they'd actually paid attention to me as a member, logged in to my account and using my app on my phone, they would have seen that every trip I took was Brussels, London, return. We are more demanding. We expect more from every digital interaction. And we're more impatient. We've all become toddlers. We've reverted to becoming stamping, screaming, I want it and I want it now. Amazon, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime now. It's absolutely in insane. What, we, what was once magic is now normal and something that we expect. Technology has enabled the shift in behavior and the shift in behavior has dictated a new way for us to connect with customers. Some of you may have seen this film before and it's, it's a concept called Micro Moments. And I wanna share with you this film because I think it's a really good way to think about today's customer and to think about the journeys that they take in coming to select and ultimately purchase different products. Give me a moment while I just share this for you. And I love that every day all over the world, people are trying to make the most of every moment. Are you there? Today's customer journey is not linear. How we thought about the customer journey of yesteryear was linear. Of course, it's not about a customer journey being linear or not. This is just how we behave. This is how human beings behave. But in the day of traditional media, we only had broadcast media. So we could only talk about our awareness and then push um, and factors that would influence consideration, purchase, and advocacy. It was all push, one to many. Whereas now we can understand so more. Through digital, through connected devices, we can use data to understand who audiences are, what their intent is, and then we can tap into that intent and respond with meaning. Of course, as brands, we have our own advertising goals, but then they're human needs. They're people trying to get the most of their lives, living every moment. Are we there? It's quite clear that two, these two objectives aren't always aligned. 
And if we spend too much time focusing on our goals, what we want to say and what we want to do and selling our message, driving our advertising prerogative, yes, we can have some short-term impact, but we'll probably have a lot of long-term damage. And on the flip side, if we spend way too much time producing beautiful content that doesn't get in the way, that offers a great experience when a customer chooses to engage with it, we may have some very happy customers, but we're going to have zero impact. Okay, we might even get fired. So the key is to actually find a sweet spot. And this is what I like to call smart communication, where we find that sweet spot to connect with these customers in those moments with ultimate meaningfulness and relevance, adding value and being assistive, okay? Sounds good, but how do we do that? How do we actually do that? Well, it's about understanding intent, understanding what the intent of our users are in any given moment. What is it that they're searching for? What is it that they're seeking out? What, what information are they looking to gain? So often in marketing, we focus just on that moment of purchase and we optimize everything towards that ultimate moment of purchase. But at any given moment, people are completely different distances from this moment of purchase. They have different levels of intent, intent to buy, okay? And we need to think about these audiences across that full customer journey. We need to connect with these audiences across that full customer journey not just at that moment of purchase. Each one of these moments, each moment where they pick up a connected digital device with an intent to do something, I want to go, I want to know, I want to do, I want to watch, I want to buy, that creates a signal, a signal for us to understand and use to map audiences into different segments, different clusters based on their intent. And we call those clusters See, think, do, care. And it's data that enables us to place people into those clusters. We can not only understand who they are, the demographics which we only had available to us in old media options, but we can understand their context. Where are they? Are they at home? Are they on the move? Are they on a laptop? Are they on a mobile? What are they interested in? What matters to them? What kind of content do they consume? What can we discern about that as brands? So that by understanding these different data points, we can then tailor how we connect with these audiences to meet their intent, what it is that they're looking for, but also meet that intent in a relevant way. Why? Because we understand demographically, psychographically, sociographically, who they are, but also what they want, what they're passionate about, what they're interested in. Are they a music fan? Are they a foodie? Are they into sports? Okay, and with this insight, we can then become more meaningful and more relevant. But we've got to start by mapping them into our intent clusters. And this model, see, think, do, care. Type in the chat, have you guys seen this model before for me? If you just type a yes or a no into the chat. This has been developed by a man called Avinash Kaushik. He writes a brilliant blog called Occam's Razor. And he's at Google. Okay, we've got some yeses, some noes. Great. Okay, fantastic. Thanks so much. So check out Avinash Kaushik. Um, Luz, maybe you could have a look for me in the meantime, if you can find him online and pop that link into the chat for us. So of course, we'll do. Thanks, Dal. So he's developed this concept of see, think, do, care. And he says, this is the way to look at the customer journey today. And you could say, well, this looks a lot like the traditional awareness funnel, awareness, consideration, conversion, advocacy, but it's not because it is from a customer-centric perspective, okay? It's used this data to understand who audiences are, what they're interested in, what is their intent, and then place them into categories, buckets, intent clusters based on their commercial intent. Okay, so your C audience is your largest addressable audience with no commercial intent. It's your largest addressable qualified audience with no commercial intent. That qualified there, what does that actual qualified mean? Well, it means somebody who is able to ultimately purchase your product, okay? So somebody might be a huge Porsche fan, but if they're never ever gonna have disposable income to be able to purchase your product, they're not gonna be considered a qualified audience, okay? Your think audience is considered your largest addressable qualified audience, with some commercial intent. 
these individuals are seeking out options. They're ready to look for solutions to their challenges. Your do commercial audience, you can think of these guys as literally in the shop ready to pick up a product and buy. Loads of commercial intent. And your care current customers with a history of commercial transactions or major brand fans. Okay, so what does this actually look like in actuality? Let's look at it for an example here. I'm going to use Activate. Activate is a sports drink. It's not like your traditional Gatorade or Energy type of drinks. It's focused more on mental focus and overall health and well-being. It's a slight appetite suppressant and it's there to help you elevate and lift your mood. All right. So how has Activate defined their see, think, do, care audiences? Their see audience, people who are interested in health and well-being. Okay, so it's qualified, but there's no intent there yet. There's no commercial intent. They're not looking for any products. That audience could be as equally interested in nutritional supplements as they are in sports shoes or yoga classes. Okay, so there's no intent for your product at this level. Your think audience has some intent. They're exploring nutrition options. They want to know what nutrition can help them in their goals of being healthy and well. Your do audience, they've narrowed down options. They're looking for a deal on a different nutritional option. They've bought Activate before or they're brand fans. Okay, so can you see there how we can tear out these different audience intent clusters to be able to understand how we can reach them? And I've mentioned a few times that this model is based on intent, what customers want to do, and therefore it's nonlinear. We need to connect across this nonlinear customer journey. Okay. And the way we do that is through signals, with data, because in every moment, a data signal is created. In the world of digital marketing, we have like this whole audience relationship management platform there, ready at our fingertips to be mined. We can unlock that to identify, target, and message with relevance and meaning people who are bang on our audience. And it means we can reach much, much wider audiences. Netflix has categorically said they do not use any demographic targeting for their programming and what they showcase as programs for different audiences. Why? Because they know that they have 76-year-old grandmothers watching Breaking Bad. If they were to only market and promote based on demos, they would be completely missing out on that audience. So you're missing a huge opportunity if you base your targeting on demographics as opposed to intent. People into different things. People are looking for different things. By using data signals, we can understand that and we can deliver against it. Okay, but what actually is a data signal? We know it's data, we know it's a signal. But when we think about data signals, we can basically bucket them into two different buckets, your data and media platform data. Okay, can anybody type into the chat? Give me an example of your data. Give me an example of data that you would own as a business. For your business, what data do you have on your customers? Pop it in the chat for me. Any thoughts? Yeah, cool. Mobile numbers, purchase series, contact information, spending patterns, nationality, sales data, bang on. Anything in your CRM, anything in your CRM is your data. So those are all great examples of CRM. There's some also spending patterns. Good, age, location, nationality, telephone. So where are we going to get this spending patterns from? Where might else we get an idea of our customers' behaviors? Where else can we observe that? Where else can we observe what our customers or our audience are doing? Our website. Okay, so our web analytics. Personas, good, thanks, Arturo, it's great. Absolutely, the data that is able to back up your personas, data-driven personas, 100%. Our website, how people are interacting with our website, where they're going on our website, what pages they're visiting, how long they're spending there, the number of pages they're going to, the dwell time. All of this gives us insight to how our users are behaving. Also, campaign interactions. How are they, how are they interacting with our campaigns? Our social feeds, our social properties. What are they doing and how are they behaving? 
This is our first party data. And this is the most valuable data. Why? Because we're the only ones that have it. Okay. But we have a huge opportunity if we can amplify our first party data with platform data. Who is an audience and what are they interested in? If we know we have a customer, Marie, we're retargeting Marie, and we also know from platform data that she's interested in events, we can target her in a different way. Or she's interested in cooking, or she's interested in music, or she's specifically looking for a new gym. We can use that data to target in different ways. Okay, so media platform data is based on people's behaviors of what they're doing online, and that's aggregated by platforms like Google and Facebook give deeper, richer understanding of what are people's passions and interests. So we can arrange affinity audiences, people who are into football. Based on their watch patterns, we can see that they're into football. People who are into fashion, people who are into beauty, people who are into health and wellness, affinity audiences. We can also define in-market audiences. Based on people's behavior, they are in market for a car. 926 interactions on average in the path to purchase to buying a new vehicle, 926, okay? So based on their online behaviors, where they're going, reviews that they're reading, websites they're visiting, scrolling through AutoTrader, these will place people into an in-market audience for looking to buy a new car. And then, of course, understanding what that keyword YouTube and Google search intent is, another huge piece of information that we can use, all right? So we're going to run a little quiz now to learn more about signals, okay? And I'm going to show you these different signals cards. At the top, we've got a descriptor of what that signal is, current customers, people who are already your customers, okay? And then it shows us at the bottom of the card, see, think, do, and care, and where we can use these signals in our campaigns. So we can use CRM, people within our database in our CRM, our current customers, they work really well as a care signal, okay? A care audience intent cluster. Could you just type yes, yes, yes into the chat if you've got that or no and you have any questions? Do we need any clarification? All good? Boom. Fantastic. Okay, are we ready for the quiz? Guys, get your fingers ready. We're going to run this as a poll, okay? So we're going to run this as a poll and Lucy's going to help me to do that. So I'm going to hand over to you now, Lucy, to head through our poll. Does that sound all right? Absolutely. Can everyone hear me okay? Right. We will start with the first one now. Great. If so your data shows shows you people who visited your website, what kind of what kind of audiences do they represent in C do you think or care? I'm going to open the poll now. Great. Thank you put your answers you. in. So is it C, people who have visited your website, would they be a C audience, a think audience, a do audience, or a care audience? Just got a couple more people answering, so I'll hang on for about 10 more seconds. Those final answers are now, and um, we'll close out the poll. Sharing okay. the results now, and we're ready for the answer. All right, so we had lots of people going for a C, a think, a do, and less for a care. Okay, and the correct answer is a think and a do. Why it isn't a C is because at the C, it's your largest address for qualified audience with no commercial intent. So it's likely that they don't even know about you as an audience yet, okay? But bang on their great work on getting that the think and the do. Next question, Luce. The next one we're looking at remarketing based on website or app behavior, abandon their shopping cart. I'm gonna open up the poll now. We get our answers in. So if data shows you people who abandon their shopping cart, what kind of audience or audiences do they represent in C, do, think, or care? Give you a few more seconds. Right, I'm going to close out the poll now. 
just processing the last few responses. Sorry about this. Right, just finishing up, seeing our responses, and I will share the results with you all. Okay, great. And we ready for the answer? Go for it, Luce. So the correct answer is in fact do, and we've got 38% of votes going to do, and that is correct indeed. Why? Because we can ascertain that if people have abandoned their shopping cart, remember I said our do audience is people that are literally in store ready to pick up your product if you were thinking about it in a physical sort of context, an in-store environment. Why have they abandoned their shopping cart? Something has prevented them from getting over that final line. So if you place this audience into your do intent cluster, knowing that there's a really high level of intent, they really want to buy, that there's something that stopped from getting them over the line, you can remarket to them, perhaps remarketing with a time offered, time limited uh, deal. And that would help to nudge them over the line. Okay, so tapping into that intent what is it that they're looking for? How ready are they to buy? And connecting in that unique manner. Great, thanks Luce, next one. Next, we're going to focus on people who have chosen to not skip your YouTube True View ad. To open up the poll, if you pop your answers in, is it see, do you think, or care? And this one, there's multiple option selection, if that's a little bit of a clue. <laughs> Thank you. Indeed, multiple answers for this one. Give it a few more seconds for the final answers to come in. WebEx is telling me there's a couple more people to submit, so giving it a few more seconds. More, just closing off the poll and we will share the results now. There are the results for this poll and are we ready for the answer? We are indeed. And it is in yeah. fact think, do and care. I think in certain cases it could actually also be C. It depends on the content of your actual ad. So why would this work at Think and Care? Because here Maybelline does this very effectively where they have creative that talks about, you know, how to apply a mascara. And so that works really well as a piece of think content that's being retargeted to audiences um, based on the fact that it's showing them more, giving them more information that could encourage them to convert. On the flip side, that being used as a piece of care content, they serve to people who they know have bought the product to show how to get the best out of the product. They also then can include uh, tribute for action, which can invite people to com complete an action. Okay, so would you like to write a review? Therefore, driving up reviews. In a similar vein, they can use a tribute for action do uh, format that encourages people to learn more or buy now and that button can click you right through to the landing page of a website for a specific product and Desigual does this very very well where they showcase different genes they have people showing those different genes and as those genes appear on the screen uh, so a uh, true for action button appears and says learn more see the product here and each sort of through each frame of the YouTube video creative it takes you to the specific landing page of those exact genes that they showcase um, in this beautiful sort of 30 second piece of content. So making it work really, really hard. Great, Luz, next one. Next, we're looking at someone who searched for, for a particular term on Google. I'm gonna open up the poll, pop in your answers. Again, you can select multiple if you think that might be the case. And now we're into platform data. So we were at CRM uh, own data, first party data, and now we're moving into platform data. Give it a few more seconds for people to get those final answers in. Great, let's share the results. And the results have come through, so we'll take a look at the answer. And it is think, do and care. Why again not see? Because there isn't any intent there. 
So search is all about relevant people searching for something specific. If they're searching for best trail running shoes, that's a great audience to target and think. If they're searching for women's Nike size seven cloud walkers, really high level of specificity, that's your do audience intent cluster. Okay, great. Thanks, Luz. Next one. Fab, moving on to uh, reach people who are actively looking to buy certain products or services based on various Examples and based on signals, excuse me, for example, visiting websites that indicate user intent to purchase the item, such as review and price comparison sites. It's going to open up the poll there. Your data is showing you people who might be interested in buying a car soon, based on the signals such as browsing recently on websites. What kind of audience do they represent? We'll give it about 10 more seconds for people to get those answers in. Great, I will close out the poll and share with you the results. Great, are um, we ready for the answer? Absolutely. Very good, and it is indeed a think audience. I would also agree that in certain instances, it could also be a do audience. And this is if you have an in-market combined with other signals based on, say, for example, their search terms and the cadence of those searches. So in-market audience is anybody who is in-market for a car, but if you can overlay that with specific searches or how much they've been searching, how long they've been in that audience, would give you a strong indication of them being a do audience as well, I completely agree. Great, Luce, next one. So we're moving on to the final one now. We've got people who are interested in new food experiences as a hobby rather than simply eating out of convenience or hunger. Which one do we think this audience represents? So no commercial intent here. No commercial intent, but somebody who could be a relevant qualified audience because of their interest in food. Give you a few more seconds to have a think and submit your answers. Okay, I'm gonna close out the poll and share the final set of results with you. Great. And the answer is? It is indeed C. These are people who could be interested in your product based on the fact that they are foodies. Absolutely. Why not a think? Because there's no commercial intent there just yet. Okay, if there were additional signals, we could then overlay those and understand that there was intent putting them into our think audience. So you can see here by understanding these different data signals, by unlocking and interpreting them, we can understand more about our audiences and then target them with relevance. And also you can see that it's not always conclusive. Is this a think audience or is this a see audience? Is this a think audience or is this a do audience? And it really, it's not um, sort of bucketed, it's on a scale. So signals can be like more dewy or more on the sort of see side of think. What matters is how you understand those signals to be able to learn more about who your customer is, who your user is, and what it is that they're looking for, and then using that insight to connect with them with relevance and meaning, and bedding that into your campaign. So just type in the chat for me now, what signals could you use for your business? Choose any one of C, Think, Do, or Care, and just pop it into the chat for me. For C, we could use this. For Think, we could use this. For Do, we could use this. Pop it into the chat for me now. We've got a question in the meantime, what is TrueView? TrueView is an ad format on Google, a video ad format. It's now 10 years old. TrueView was launched in 2010, and it is the most common YouTube video ad that you see. So it's often what gets played at the beginning of watching something on YouTube, okay? Skippable, skippable pre-roll pre is what they also referred to. Great, anybody wanna take a go? There's no right or wrong answers here. It really is just about having a play and having a try. Okay, so you think you could use C, and what would you use at C, Mohammed? 
Somebody who's looking for articles, sorry, your B2B, so some of this doesn't work for you. I wouldn't necessarily agree with you, Josephine. It depends on what that audience is researching. I've run this lab with quite a lot of B2Bers, um, and it's been really successful. Tell me about so looking at articles on LinkedIn, but that is a really valid signal that you could be using, absolutely. C is about expanding the customer base. Oops, don't worry, Josephine, no problem at all. Do someone is researching an insurance quote for a new vehicle. Perfect, you're in automotive sales, absolutely. That's a really nice do signal if they are. Because they're really close to that point of conversion, you know that they're wanting to buy because they're looking into insurance. They're late in the decision-making process. C, engineers wanting to learn about pick VS. What's pick VS? I think that's a typo, but yes, you are bang on there, Anka. Engineers wanting to learn about X. So it's a really nice broad audience, but it's qualified because they have a specific intent do they want to learn by attending an e-learning? Do they want to go to a course? Is it about CPD? You don't know. Is it about buying a book? But you've got a really nice broad audience there. Any more people like to take a quick punt for their audiences and their customers or users? Think researching types of vacation. Very nice, they are bang on, exactly. A rugby fan searching for tickets to a match. Really good, yes. Engineers think for new tech. Absolutely, everybody, bang on. So let's just have one more whip through this example for Activate. Here, our affinity audience for C, we could target people who are health conscious, health conscious audience, okay? I think people who are in market for different nutritional supplements, in this instance, specifically drinks, and searches, people searching for drinks to help with concentration. For our do audience, People searching specifically for Activate deals. They now know about Activate. They've heard about it. They want to buy it. They're visiting an online store. They're looking at a product page. Our care audience, someone who subscribed to our newsletter, someone who's bought from us before. We've got some more coming in there for dudes, creating an event with finance, engineers requesting a quotation. Bang on, exactly, everybody. Cool. So what do we do? And a Google review. Very good, Anka. Thank you as a care. Absolutely. So what do we do once we've got these signals? Well, these signals give us the insight to understand the different intent and mindsets of our customers. So along that customer journey, what are their pain points? What are their concerns? What are their desires? What are they looking to solve? Our signals give us an understanding into that. And this provides the foundation on which to build a customer-centric digital or marketing campaign across the full customer journey. The first step in that is discerning what messages we share with these different audiences for their different levels of intent across their customer journey. All right, and we're gonna play a little game to get us ready for thinking about this idea of messaging. You've spent now nearly 40 minutes with me. Um, you know that I'm called Gina. You've probably discerned some things about my character from what you've seen and heard. Okay, now I promise I won't take any offense, but I want you to guess for me. I'm going to go home, well, I am at home. I'm going to watch my favorite film tonight. Okay, so I've watched this film many times. Um, I know the scenes, I know the music, I know the characters. Of course, I know exactly what's happening next, but this is my favorite film. This is my favorite film, and I'm going to watch it tonight. And I want you now to type into the chat a guess of what you think that film might be. What do you think that film might be? Type it into the chat for me now. Mamma Mia, The Holiday, Three Weddings and a Funeral, Four Weddings and a Funeral, Notting Hill, The Greatest Showman, The Last Mohican. Oh my, am I that transparent? Am I really that transparent? <laughs> Titanic, no, okay. But Mamma Mia, The Holiday, the reason I live in this village is because it looks just like The Holiday terrifying. Greatest Showman. My husband actually tried to play that as our wedding song when we got married in the registry office. So you guys and Notting Hill, yes, I confess I have lost, watched a lot of Notting Hill. Yes, the note, you all have chosen films that I know. I must be very transparent. Okay. So what, like, what were we actually doing in that exercise? Well, what brands often fail to do? You've only seen me for 40 minutes. And you took a punt, and you all pretty damn close in 
guessing what I would be interested in. Why? Because you had observed me. You looked at attributes about me. You probably looked at my background. You looked at my demographics. You listened to how I was speaking. You ascertained things that gave you insight. Okay, a lot of it may have been assumption, but you did a lot better than what so many brands do. As brands, so often we just talk about us, what our brand does that's great, and what our product does, the features, the benefits. We don't actually make an effort to think, what does the customer want to hear about this? What do they want to watch? What do they want to do? What do they want to know? Okay. And so, of course, I was there representing the customer and you were representing the brand. So we need to bed this in into our messaging strategies through using See, Think, Do, Care. Okay. And again, using this model, we can use it to vary how we speak to people at different stages in their customer journey to tap into their intent to be relevant and meaningful. And in order to achieve this, I like to think of, you know, what is it that I'm looking to achieve? What currency am I looking to achieve at See, Think, Do and Care? You need to know what my favorite film is now. Guys, it's Eat, Pray, Love. It's not my favorite film, but it's like my default. It's so embarrassing. But I've had to move away from that, and now I'm into the classics. So I've been doing a lot of Pride and Prejudice, a lot of Sense and Sensibility, a lot of Death Comes to Pemberley. So I'm quite sort of classic or, yeah, basically just look at rom-com. So we've got like rom-com modern day and rom-com from like Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte, and you'll pretty much have me in a nutshell. So you all did really well. <laughs> so when it comes to see, think, do, care, we want to look at like what is, the currency that I'm looking for. At C, I want people's attention. I want them to stop and I want them to take note. At Think, I want their time. I want them to spend more time with my brand, with my product, looking at my product pages, reading content, looking at reviews. At Do, I want their money. I want them to convert or I want the conversion. Is it completing a configurator? Is it requesting that insurance quote? What is that conversion? And at Care, I want to sell to them again. I want to grow them, develop them as a customer. Okay, so our language will change. The way we message, we might be inspiring, surprising, entertaining at sea. Still inspiring, but more informative, helpful, perhaps convincing at care. At do, helpful, aware, actionable. And I say they're aware because it's about being aware that you know this is a customer you're retargeting. So not telling them about the product from the top, telling them about a message that is most relevant to them. And our care audience, again, showing that awareness, inspiring and complimentary. We know that you bought this, perhaps you'd like to buy this rain mac to go with the Wellington boots you recently bought. Okay. So when it comes to crafting messages for your businesses, how might they vary across see, think, do, care? Can you pop that into the chat for me? How do you think your messaging might vary? What might you say to do? What would you say to do? That's an easy one. What could you say to do? Tactical, yeah. Give me an example, Sarah. It would be very tactical. Strong call to action. You wanting to drive people out in the line. Think really nice, Claire. Check out a virtual tour. Exactly. You're providing them with more insight, more information to nudge them along that customer journey. We offer a discount. Buy now and get a discount. Very good, that's a really good do message. At a C, did you know? And share an interesting fact. Thank you, say our care, C, we care for humanity. Humanity matters, and you're targeting people who are interested in sustainability, you're gonna have people engaged. WaterAid does this very, very well. Any other, any other? What about a care? We've had a see, we've had a think, we've had a do. Give me a care. What might we say at care? How is your experience? Absolutely. Learn more about where you can take your new Mercedes G class and go on great adventures. Sign up for our monthly road trip series. Okay, ways to continue to engage your customer. Keep them part of your community. All right, so here's just an example from Activate again. We understand what busy people need. If you can focus better, you'll have more time for your loved ones. Activate is superior to other energy drinks 
and it doesn't make you gain weight. Making it a part of your daily routine will help you to focus. Do. Buy Activate in, six of, in packs of six saves you 12%. Get a free sample on our website or find a store near you. Can you see how many like, definable interactions that's driving? What does that enable you to do? Measure. How many people have signed up for a sample? How many people have checked the store locator? How many people have bought a pack of Activate 6 online or found a place that they can do that? Care. There are other products within the same, with the same philosophy for athletes. These people choose between pure and pro, depending on their schedule. Okay, so I really urge you to use this approach to messaging as part of your briefing strategy when working with your agencies to understand your audience, understand their different intent and how you can put those into clusters and then craft the right messages to reach audiences with ultimate meaningfulness and relevance in those moments that matter to them, okay? Because ultimately this is what digital maturity is. Google conducted a study with the Boston Consulting Group. They looked at over 400 businesses and they assessed businesses across all industries in terms of how digitally mature they were. And they ranked them from nascent to emerging, connected and multi-moment. Only 2% of businesses are multi-moment. What is multi-moment? Digitally mature, getting the right message to the right person at the right time. Smart communication in that sweet spot. To reach today's empowered audience, this is how we need to engage. And we need the skills to do that. We've got to be constantly leaning into lifelong learning. And the Brand Activation Lab developed with Google explores what I've gone through here today and way more in loads of detail to empower you and your teams to be able to do this. Okay. So the journey that you go on is identifying and defining your audience, exploring signals, which we did now, but in way more depth, messages once you've found those audiences, what do you tell them? Ad formats. How do you then deliver different ad formats across the full customer journey to grab their attention and drive conversion? How do you measure success? How do you know your campaign has been successful? And then to drive impact from your learning, you pull to a roadmap to bring it all to life. And what do you actually create in the learning? A blueprint, a campaign blueprint or a prototype that defines a full end-to-end -end campaign across the full customer journey from audience through signals, messaging, ad formats, and metrics looking at both effectiveness and efficiency metrics. And you walk away with a prototype of your next planned campaign end-to-end. -end. And in addition to that, you also build a now next long, short, mid and longer term action plan that helps you to implement your campaign, what needs to happen to bring your campaign to life, what tech do you need to enable you to do this, and what are the organizational shifts that are required to change in order for you to deliver this. For example, we need to be delivering dynamic creative. In order to do that, we need to put in place different approval processes so that our creative can be signed off. So at the same time as helping you think about how to build best in class digital campaigns, it also hacks how you're operating from a tech and all perspective so that you can go back and have meaningful conversations with teams within your business to help enable transformation and drive it forward, both from a skills, tech, cultural and organizational perspective. And in terms of the audience, like who could come to this lab? Marketers, I've trained this on this lab for the last four years, marketers of all levels, managers, execs, managing directors, CMOs, marketing specialists, people who are specialists in any one field, SEO, social, PPC, other specialists, and partners, your creative and media partners. Anybody who's in any one of these roles can come and benefit from this course, okay? And it is suitable for a range of different verticals. I've trained people from all sorts of businesses, Postbank in Germany, Rand Merchant Bank in South Africa, HSBC UK, Gazprom in Russia, ING in the Netherlands, in Pharma and Healthcare, AccuView, Nasanor, which is a nasal spray, Philips and Braun, Tech and Telco, Safaricom Africa, Hello Print, Netherlands, online printers in Germany, Sony and Photobox, CPG in retail, we've worked with Alessi in, the, in Italy, L'Oreal, Coca Cola, and we've had loads of others, Greece and Kenya tourism boards, betting companies, gaming, insurance, Warner Brothers, Disney, even Drainbusters and Rentakill have come and benefited from this lab. 
and it serves multiple purposes. It delivers learning, but it also drives mindset and behavior shift, collaboration and working across different teams. And it shows you a way to do this effectively and easily. It also looks at marketing in a digital world and deepens this experience. It enables you and your team to understand how to think about it and deliver effective marketing in the digital world. And it can also work very well as a consultative approach where anytime you have a big campaign to be built and you need some additional consultative support, it's run by people like me and others who all work as marketing managers, marketing directors, marketing consultants. We're not just trainers. We train because we love training, but we actually do marketing day in, day out, every day. So you can come with a campaign to this lab and have the help of experts like myself to really in a consultative hackathon surgery type of approach work through and build that campaign with you okay does anybody have any questions we've had a question say could you please give us a link to the program or the course absolutely there will be a follow-up and how you can enroll so that will all be shared with you directly after this webinar so that will be coming through does anybody else have any other questions on either the brand activation lab or the stuff that we've learned today. Grazie, you're very welcome. I do, well, yes, I have. So I've worked um, with quite a lot of London members clubs and also wine clubs uh, so and luxury hospitality. So I have got experience there um, working in the luxury environment, absolutely. And the lab would work very well for businesses in the luxury space. Any other questions? So if you want to learn more, these are the people to get in touch with, Jason and Sonia. Luz, if you could just do me a favor, if, it's, if you're able to just grab that email address and phone number and pop them into the chat so it's easy for people to copy. Otherwise, guys, just take a photo um, of, the, of, this, of this screen because uh, we're not going to be sending this deck to you, but we will be following up. So grab a photo of this to learn more about signing up um, or look out for the post lab comms. Thanks so much. That's been popped there into the chat. So if you want to get hold of Jason um, and Sonia, you've got their details there. Just drop them an email. Uh, or give them a call and follow me on LinkedIn. I'm Gina Vessel, W-E-S-S-E-L-S. -S -S -E it was in the promo email and I can see loads of people have already checked out my LinkedIn profile. Uh, so thank you for doing that. And yeah, pop me a message, keep in touch, let me know how you go and come join us on a lab. It's brilliant and you'll learn a lot. You're very, very welcome. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for your time and enthusiasm and participation today. And a huge thank you to Luce. You've been a superstar. Obviously couldn't do this without you. Thank you, Gina. And thank you everyone for joining. That was a really great session. Thanks team. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.